Okay. Hey, guys, I got three points this morning. Um, normally, I take a book of the Bible and we preach through it. We just finished the book of First Thessalonians. And so until we land our next book, I decided to do a series on mental health. And the reason why is um, everybody's talking about it. You know, uh, we, we've seen it building and coming on. Our, our last couple generations especially would go off to the military and come back. And PTSD was like, you know, it was something you hardly, uh, you didn't hear of a lot. And then these people came back, and some of them seen some real trauma, some real difficulty, and some of them didn't, and they still struggled. And you find out a lot of it was, you know, based upon the ways they were raised. They just didn't have what it takes to deal with this difficulty, you know. And then, of course, when COVID hit, and like, I like Chris's example about the coals when everybody separated, boy, did it reveal a lot. And everybody says, oh, but we got social media. We're, we're connected like never before. We're connected like never before. It's true. What, what should draw us closer, it actually has separated us uh, of the physical, of the face-to-face -face time. And so tons of people out there really struggle. And what they do is, and of course, you know, they, then they come up with new labels all the time. Every year they add a, a few more. And so, like, if you would, it depends on where you go. If you look up mental illness, that, that definition is like water. It's all over the place. They change, they add to it. But if you look at mental health, I get it. And I would venture to say that if you looked at it, um, everybody at some point or another has some serious struggles in this department. So you know what I do? This is what I've always done. And I learned this years ago from an old pastor. He just said, man, Mike, here's what you do. He said, whatever culture is struggling with, he said, you just take that subject and you take God's word and you preach it. You go against it. Uh, if it goes against God's word, you proclaim that out loud. He goes, it'll cause you some trouble. But I'm telling you, that's what we do is God's word is applicable to all of life. We believe that God's word crosses cultural bounds, time frames, all that type of thing. So I decided that, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open the Bible and I'm going to preach on mental health. And uh, I had some warnings. I had a few people warn me and just say, hey, are you sure? We've lost enough people in this church. Do you want to lose them? I thought, my gosh, if I lose them because of what the Bible says, then I'm not sure we ever had them. Um, now, if I lose them because I'm just a knucklehead, that's another problem, you know. That people leave and just says, speaking of mental health and mental illness, I think it's him, you know, and uh, that's partially true. So I'm going to give you three things today because you know what I believe? I believe, I believe the Bible doesn't deal with all these symptoms. You know, the Bible like goes right after the heart. It goes right to the point. And it's hard and difficult for, it's hard to handle, man. I'm not going to lie, it's hard to handle. But I have learned doing biblical counseling for years that uh, most people's solutions to their problems are just so simple. They're difficult. They're hard to do. I get that. But they're real simple. We like to sometimes make them complex. So let me take you on a journey. I'm going to give you three points about this. And because what I want to do is we're talking about the mind. I've looked up every time mind and heart appears in the Bible. A lot of times I'll boil this down to the inward man, the inside of all of us, you know. Because I believe we're made up of a body, soul, and a spirit. Without Jesus Christ, the Bible says that spirit's there, but it's dead. So people have a dead spirit. There's no connection to the living God. So that's why when you get saved to meet Jesus, he puts his Holy Spirit inside of you. And now your spirit becomes alive. So we are a triune being. And the problem is we got a body, right? And then we got a soul, but the spirit on the inside is dead. Uh, 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 you know, everybody, everybody across the board, we are born in sin. So I want to let you know something that um, I don't care where you're at in life or where you were at on the scale of like mental health If we'd give a list of ten or like the doctor brings out the smiley faces What's your pain like you know you got this smiley face done and then you got some guy over here That's all cracked up and tears are dropping then they put all the faces in between where would you mark yourself at this morning about being mentally healthy? Well, I want you to know something without Jesus Christ. It wouldn't matter where you would mark that thing The Bible says you're off You're not on you're off some people have good morality, 
And you can still be off because you know what the standard is. The standard is not what I think or how I feel. I'm feeling pretty good today. Well, unfortunately, that's not the standard. The standard is put out for you and me in God's word. This is the standard, right? It's not becoming like your dad or being a nice guy like your grandma. You know, grandma. Uh, the standard's Christ, and he puts it out here in his word for you and me. So the first point I have for you today is the lost mind. The lost mind. The Bible says in Romans 1, 28, when people don't retain God in their knowledge, God gives them over to a reprobate mind, a mind that's cast away. Now, everybody always wants to look at somebody that's like, you know, oh, that guy is on drugs. He is messed up and can't hold a job. Bad. You know, we like to take it. We label things. You know, that lady's trying to change her gender. Wow, something's wrong. That used to be a mental illness and not anymore. And people like to take those extreme situations, but the Bible makes it more simple than that. You know, people always, you know, just say, oh, well, 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 yeah, he's that way. He was born that way. Hey, my friend, we're all born that way. Romans 3.23 says, for all of sin and fall short of God's glory. We're all born that way. We're all born off. We're not on. Matter of fact, I like how Paul says it in Corinthians. He uses the word blinded. People that don't believe and know Jesus Christ, they're just blinded. They don't see reality. They don't live in reality. So it's possible that we're all crazy. It's possible without God's word, we're all off. I, I believe that. There's different forms of crazy, isn't there? We know that. There's, my uncle was an alcoholic and worked his whole life. He was just very functioning. He was good at it. Some people can't handle it like that. You know, it remind, here's what it reminds me of. We don't like to think of it this way all the time, but the Bible says without Jesus, we're blinded. The Bible calls that book right there, the Bible, it calls it the mind of Christ. But left to our own mind, no matter how you perceive things and put it together in your worldview, the Bible says it would just be wrong. The Bible frequently uses the word defiled or corrupt. That's what our, that's what our minds is. First, Corinthians, uh, First Timothy 6 says that. Not the words, if it's not the words of Christ and his doctrine, you are men of a corrupt mind. Your mind's corrupted. So if it's not this, it's wrong. That's the Bible. Now, you don't have to believe the Bible. We're Bible believers here. So this is what the Bible says. And this is what's wrong with our culture today. The Bible's been silenced. It's not what it used to be. It's not a respected book like it used to be. Christians ain't proclaiming it and speaking it. And all of a sudden, men are left to their own minds. And guess what? The world has become an insane asylum, and it's run 100% by the inmates. It's wrong. It's off. To me, it reminds me of, like, color. You know, a lot of times people in the fall, they don't really understand colors. You get your colors mixed up. Because basically the fall comes and people are just like, oh, check it out. The leaves are changing from green to brown. Like the real color was supposed to be green. It's actually not true. The real color of leaves are actually yellowish, orangish. They got the brown tint to them, not green. See, the reason why is brown leaves become green, it's because of um, chlorophyll. It begins to reproduce on the brown leaves. And so springtime comes in summer, and we think, oh, my gosh, look at all this stuff. It's so like a life. But the natural color of a leaf is actually brown. It, 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 because of chlorophyll, it becomes camouflage, and it looks green to you and me. Isn't that funny, though? We would look at it and just say, oh, man, look at this beautiful color. But, hey, guys, we're wrong on that. We're wrong when you look at the science behind it. Green is impressive. Green seems to be the real deal. But actually, green is hiding the real deal. It's brown. We're just off. We like green better because we know what, we're heading into fall, you know, what, what happens. Um, I don't know if you ever watched that show. I like the dog Whisperer, man. I like that guy. This guy blows me away. Every time he does things, he does, he like does biblical counseling. And he doesn't even use the Bible. He don't even know he's doing it. And this week, it was funny. There was this sweet couple, and they had this little dog. They moved to this area, and this little dog, they called their dog Bella. And it's just this cute little terrier thing, and they put little clothes on it and <laughs> walk it off. But this dog, everywhere it's at, just... <laughs> it's one of those little dogs that everybody wants to step on them, you know? Oh, except the owner. 
You know, all your neighbors love you and hate your dog. This little dog's running all over Los Angeles and just barking at every little dog, every little thing. And this sweet old guy, man, he's retired, just sweet guy. He's like, he keeps, Bella, it's okay. It's okay. He said, these dogs are your friend. And he's a sweet old man. That's what he kept saying everywhere. They were, and it would pull the leash and he'd pull back. Everywhere, all the time, Bella, it's okay. These animals are your friends. As soon as this guy comes up, the dog whisperer guys, he says, let me see how it works. And he's watching him just to size the dog up. And all of a sudden, the guy's doing his business. And the guy's like, it's okay. And this dog's going absolutely crazy and fish. <laughs> going crazy, trying to get other dogs. And it's okay. They're your friends. They're your friends. And finally, he just ended the madness. He goes, okay, I got to stop you. It's not okay. He said, what your dog's doing is not okay. What you're saying is what you're doing is your dog's barking. You want him to stop? So listen, you're a dog. You're barking, and your owner says, it's okay. No, that's not okay. He goes, as soon as that dog was put in the hands of Caesar, he gave it a little bit of confidence, kept it near him, didn't allow it, kept correcting it. It took like minutes. And this old guy was just like, I, I can't believe it. And he says, well, let me turn the dog loose. These are my dogs. And he's like, no, well, we're afraid what's going to happen. He turned that little dog loose, and he took, like, the anxiety away. And this little dog loved all the other dogs. He's like, well, I just thought it was going to rip him to shreds. He goes, that's because you're thinking wrong. So even though he's the dog whisperer, what he says is, he says that every show he goes, I actually train humans. I don't train dogs. And I just love his mentality because, you know, the lost mind's bizarre. It's okay. It's okay. Guys, it's not okay. The Bible says it's not okay. And the true color of leaves are not green. That's the facts. I'd rather have them green, I'm not going to lie. But the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not. So the first point is the lost mind. I want you to know. Now, here's the comfort I want to bring you this morning. If you don't think according to the Bible, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're probably crazy. The good news is you're sitting with crazy people because we're all that way at some form or another. Now, a lot of us have met Jesus Christ, and God has changed our mind a little bit. But really, a lot of times people think, what a great family, what a great guy, just because their morality is in place and they make more money than everybody else. People think that's successful. Don't fool yourself. That's not what the Bible says success is. Let's take God's definition of that, right? And so that's the lost mind. But I want to show you guys something. Everybody, take your Bibles and go to the book of Hebrews. If you're, if you're quick, go to Hebrews. If not, you can look these stuff up. And guys, by the way, like the lost mind, I literally got 12 verses sitting here in front of me. If you want them, you can come up and look right at my sheet and get them. I'm just not giving them all. We don't have time. I just I want to give you God's opinion on the matter. So we got the lost mind. But here's what God says in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. I love these verses. It says in verse 10, it says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. I will be to them a God. They shall be to me a people. God, get, he also says the same thing over in Hebrews chapter 10. God knows where human beings are at. He knows left to ourselves we're in deep trouble, Right? I mean, you leave enough people together long enough with no intervention, you know what happens, don't you? They'll destroy each other. That's, that's what will happen. Because we're not right. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 16 says this, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds while I write them. God comes on the scene and says, this is the lost, troubled, reprobate mind. And God says, I have a goal, a covenant, an agreement I want to enter in, and I want to put my laws, my word, into their heart and mind. God knows what we need. Today, everybody like, you know, we, we all got these social media accounts, right? And everybody wants to, you know, put 
you know, your status. You always want to be something. It's what you think and what you believe. It don't matter. And it don't matter what science says. It don't matter what the facts are saying. But if you do this or identify as this, then that's the way it's going to be. See, what they've done is they've given a, a lot of leeway. It's like they've taken the lines off the road. They removed the curbs and just said, just drive the way you want to. And you know what that's going to be. Chaos, man. People are going to hit each other. People are going to be in the ditch. That's why at airports it's so important to have a big tower, somebody that sees better than everybody else. They see all the lines, all the entranceways, all the gates, and like, okay, flight 232, I want you to slow down. We've got another plane coming in front of you. He does all of that and controls all that to avoid crazy accidents, especially you go to a larger airport. You're like, man, how do they do that stuff? They got a perspective, man. They see it all. That's a perspective in life that we don't have. And so you know what God does for you and me? And people say this all the time. Like when God says don't do something, people are like, see, that's just nothing but control. What God's saying is, dude, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> it's all for our safety. It's all like for our protection. You know, we'd never go to a sporting event where they're just like, hey, anything goes when the whistle blows. <laughs> go. What happens? Chaos. That's what happens. We need the curbs. We need the lines. We need the boundaries. God provides the boundaries. It's, it's his word. But notice he says, I want to put my laws in their hearts. Why? He's like David. You know what David cries in Psalms 51? David says, God created me a clean heart. Why did David say that? Because the human heart's dirty. And renew a right spirit within me. Was David's spirit wrong? Everybody's inward spirit is wrong. And, and David cries out and says, God, do this for me, right? That's why when Jesus would cast out a demon. So here's something demonic in a guy, evil thinking, and all of a sudden Jesus would cast it out and everybody's just like, we're amazed. This dude's in his right mind. Because his mind before that was wrong. Now I know that's a little bit more clear of a situation because there was actually a demon there, you know. But God gives people over to a reprobate mind. It's just up to you and me what, what we want to believe. So First point, the lost mind. The second point is, God has always said from the beginning, he wants to give a new spirit. He wants to give a new mind to you and me. So I just want to let you know, there's hope for you and there's hope for me. There's hope. Guys, we got a lot of problems out there. We all know people. And it's not like, you know, years ago, I'm not lying. Years ago, you go into a classroom and there might, well, years ago, there was no troubled kids in a classroom hardly because they, all, they put them in one room together. They've changed that through time. Used to go into a class and so growing up, we'd always have one kid and usually we were okay with it. We knew that this gal had some trouble and the teacher told us, hey, everybody be patient and you help Paige over here. Everybody, and then you know, she struggles and so make sure somebody helps. And, and we would learn these things and, and then all of a sudden, before you know it, you know what happened? It all stemmed from money, actually, grants, and you'd get more money per kid in a classroom. So they started, it was, it was all about this is what it amounted to. But, but now all of a sudden you go to an average classroom, and um, what would be perceived as normal, now there's a lot of behavioral problems. Some could be corrected in the home, and some might stem from something up here. You know, some people really do are born with some issues and things not quite correct. But you go into it, and in a lot of classrooms you'll go, and you're just like, wow, this is chaotic, isn't it? Part of the chaos is because people just say, well, it's who he is, it's who she is, so we got to let him be that, Right. And so all of a sudden they start removing these boundaries and all of a sudden, you know, chaos abounds. And teachers are, you talk to an older teacher and they're just very discouraged by this because they're just like the education systems went downhill because I spend my whole time being a mom and a dad. I do my whole, whole time correcting students instead of educating them. I totally get it. So that's why as a church, we want to make sure our homes are steady. Our homes, we got it together. We're doing the right thing. I, I totally see all that. I think you see it too. But what I love about this, the Bible says the lost mind is off. But God says, I've always had plans. Why do you think God has given us his word? The only offensive weapon the church has. God gives us this book right here. Hey, do, let me, you know, John 3 verse 3 says, Everybody needs to be born again, right? We've got a body, soul, and a spirit. That spirit's dead. And God says, you know what really needs to happen, Nicodemus? You need to be born again. And he's like, born again? That's weird. No, not physically. Something needs to change on the inside. Something's wrong on the inside with everybody. 
And hey, if you're quick in your Bible, take your Bible and go to First Peter one twenty three. First Peter one twenty three. It's the only time uh, that he uses the word again, the word born again. First Peter one twenty three, and he says this: being born again. Then he says this: not of a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. You know how men and women get born again? You know how they got the inside changed or fixed or filled? This book, the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It's the only way to be saved. So men are born messed up, right? The lost mind and heart of man, it's emptiness. You try to figure it all out on your own. And then all of a sudden, God says, yeah, but I want to give you a new mind. Well, here's how that starts. God's word said that Jesus Christ was giving as redemption for you, as a propitiation, a payment for your sin. So to meet Jesus Christ, your life can be totally transformed and changed. And now what you do is all the pressure. Life is filled with pressure, isn't it? Pressure, pressure, everywhere you go, pressure, pressure. Most people don't have what it takes on the inside to face what's on the outside. And that's why you crack. That's why you can't deal with it. I need help. That's why doctors write prescriptions a ton because, Doc, I need it. I'm going to lose my stuff. I can't lose my stuff with my kids. I need help. Yes, you need help. And so they try to give us that help. Let me tell you, genuine help. Let me tell you where it starts. It starts here. The inside of man is lost. It's gone. It's off. It's far from the mark. And all of a sudden, if you meet Jesus Christ, he'll take his Holy Spirit and he'll fill you. He'll put his spirit inside of you. And my friend, now you have what it takes inside. He's given you a church of people. He's given you the word of God to feed that. As long as you feed the beast on the inside, there is nothing on the outside that can crush you. Nothing. I remember laying, my buddy had a swimming pool, and I remember uh, his grandparents did. I swam to the bottom of it, and I thought, I'm just going to lay in the bottom of the pool. I've seen people do that in the movies before. And I laid down there, and I lasted probably about eight seconds because I was like, why does my head feel like it's getting ready to crush? I felt like a tin can in there because the pressure was so immense. Can you imagine? You, you've, I think we've all, you, you dive down. You ever jump off a cliff into some water? You're down there, and you're just like, oh, my gosh. You just can't take it. That's why you got to have equipment, you know. That's why even submarines so deep in the ocean will crush like a tin can. The whole key to all that is is the way little fish are able to live down there. Grown men and big machinery can't do it very well. We just had that issue in the news here over the last several weeks, haven't we? And then a little fish down there is doing fine. Why? Because they've learned God's designed them in such a way that that pressure on the inside could be equal to what's on the outside. And so what you mean, when God gives us this new mind, he's put inside of you and me his spirit and his word in the church. He's given us all the tools that no amount of immense pressure on the outside can crush you and me. And that's what Paul says. Paul tells the churches, he goes, guys, man, I'm telling you what. Like, he'll just name me. Oh, yeah, I was persecuted, but not destroyed. He says all these things like, oh, my gosh, it came in on me over here. But let me tell you what. Here I am. You know. Yeah, I wasn't very happy, but I was filled with joy. Because happiness is kind of temporary. You know, we all want to giggle and laugh and eat Cheetos all the time. I wish life was like that. I would just love to have orange lips and orange fingers all the time. Cheetos, Doritos, I'm happy. It's wrong, dude. You can't live that way. You're going to be messed up. You know what's going to happen? You're going to be overweight and have the diabetes. Wow, it's true, isn't it? And God just says, I got something for you. Let me put my spirit inside of you. That's what I want to do. This is my mind. And so you got the lost mind, but God wants to give us a new mind. It starts with salvation and meeting Jesus Christ. That's the start, but you've got to grow in that. And then all of a sudden you feed the inside, and all of a sudden, guys, you've got what it takes. Why do people struggle with the craziest things? Everyone wants to be successful. Everybody wants to make money. Some people can't get to that spot, and then they experience drugs. And why do we like drugs? Why do people do that? It don't start off just like, it usually don't start off just saying, my point is this. It's enjoyable. 
My life is so low, I get an opportunity to be high. That's why I do it. That's why every... Now, then the addiction catches them and down the road, and then all of a sudden it beats your tail, and you realize something. You realize, I do not have what it takes on the inside to deal with this. I thought this was going to be okay. It's not okay, is it, Homer? It's not okay, right? The lost mind, and, and, and the Bible wants to give you and me a new mind. God promises that. I want to put my words in your heart in, on the inside. I want to transform and change you. And then my last point is simply this, and I'm done. This is, I've already said it, this is the mind of Christ. I might like Chevrolet, and you might like Ford. We, can, we both might be able to argue our points. But we can stand. You know, it, it, it's an opinion, right? I get that. We can go mind to mind. And on some things, it's like, whatever. Blue's a better color than red. I'm just telling you. And some of you'd say, oh, really? You know, we could go back and forth and argue these things. Everybody's got opinions. We're all filled with the mind, and, you know, we should use it for sure. But that's, you ever go to a philosophy class? It's the most silliest thing I've ever been in my life. I've been in a couple of them. And you get in there, and it's just like, well, what do you think? Hey, what do you think that means? And at some point, you're just like, and then some crazy girl in the back comes up with this cockamamie story and just tells us, and we're just like, I think she's crazy. And the teacher's like, hey, this is philosophy class. That's her opinion, and it really matters. She's nuts. Everybody in the class thinks she's crazy. I didn't. Notice I use she. I didn't do that on purpose. The he, the guy in the back is doing that, right? Every, philosophy is like, well, and if, if you're good enough and you're smart enough with your words, you can get an A in every paper in philosophy class because you can always argue just like, oh, you're saying my opinion's wrong? And they're like, well, no. You know, yeah, because I think, you know what I'll do? I'll take you before the faculty. I'm going to turn this teacher in. You're mean. And then the teacher, and guess what? He wrote, he took a red pen and wrote on my paper. That's negative, isn't it? It hurts so bad when he wrote those things on. And you're like, okay, no more red pens in the classroom. That's so negative, isn't it? It's destroying the minds of our kids. Them minds were destroyed before the red pen ever came out. But people are crazy. People, we're all crazy. The Bible's accurate. The Bible's right. That's why we get in it every morning as Christians, don't we? Because I'm like, hey, God, adjust my head here a little bit. I'm hurt. I'm messed up. I'm thinking this. My feelings are all over here. And uh, boy, Alexander, what a good word she said when she's like, not, not always can I trust those feelings and emotions. They're not very trustworthy because they can take you places you don't want to be. They take you places that are not real. That's what's beautiful about God's word. So I want you to know this, guys. This is the mind of Christ. Anything outside of the Bible, 1 Corinthians 2, 16, who has known the mind of the Lord? We have the mind of Christ. This is this book. That's why he says, hey, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Hey, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's what he says. The Bible. Hey, ground yourself, ground yourself in truth, on the facts, right? Get in the Bible. You know, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 1, 7, God doesn't give the spirit of fear. By the way, when you start looking at mental health, a lot in the top ones, of course, are going to be depression and anxiety. You'll find out the base of a lot of those things are fear. They're fear-based. And God says, I don't give the spirit of fear. But you know what he gives? He says uh, power, love, and then the last one is what? A sound mind. He gives us this book. It's sound. I'm not always sound. You're not always sound either. Just admit it. You ever get in a, an argument? You get crazy. You lose your head a little bit, don't you? You say things you don't mean. and Later on, you're like, my gosh, I even want to apologize. But I don't even want to bring it back up. Because everybody in the household is going to know that dad's crazy. Yeah, I am. I'm pretty messy when I don't have the new mind, when I don't have the mind of Christ, uh, you know, going, going through me and in my head. You know, I, I don't know about you. Guys, don't think, and some people say, I'm not on medicine. I don't see a counselor. I'm fine. Well, if it don't line up with the Bible, the Bible says you're not fine. You don't have to agree with it. We're, we all get opinions. God gives us that. That's what I love about our God. He gives us a will, doesn't he? We all got wills. You don't have to believe it. This is the book of truth. You're like, I don't believe it. You don't have to. It doesn't change the fact that it's true still. The bottom line is God's mind and God's opinion is the only one that matters. 
It's the only one that matters. Yours, mine. It's kind of like this. Some people think just because, oh, he's really crazy. You know what this guy did? You know what he said? Yeah, you know, he's been seeing a counselor for a long time, and now they got him medicated, and, it's, and, and people think, oh, that guy's... It, to me, it's kind of like this. It's like going to the morgue. And, like, there's a case opened up, and so they're like, okay, let's preserve this body for a while so they do what they need to do and preserve it in the cooler and all that type. Then a, a body comes in fresh. And, so, and then they do their chemicals, you know, and they suck this out of that and put this inside. And, you know, so this body here, they're just like, man, we've had to keep this body because of this court case. It's in here, and it's been in here for two months. This guy over here... It's just been, he's just been dead for a few hours. So my question for you is this. If I just said, which one's deader? I don't even know if that's a word, but which one's the most dead? Well, what's the definition of death? N no life. They're equally dead. Sometimes we look at people and we, we do that. We're just like, oh, yeah, that's bad. Hey, my friend, when it don't line up with the Bible, it's all bad. That's why we like to pick on issues. And, you know, let, let me tell you what my, my, my philosophy a little bit, and this is mine. I'm not saying that. I'm not giving you a verse on this. I'm giving you a little bit of an opinion here from this pastor. My opinion is a lot of times we like to pick on an issue. Because sometimes when I can point to an issue and pick on something and make it like a soapbox, then it gives me a loud voice and it keeps the microscope, it keeps the eyeballs off of my issues that might be smaller or I'll make them smaller in front of everybody else just so we can, you know, that's what happens. You know, uh, my buddy just had a marriage retreat and he hired a pastor to come in and his wife he said, man, this marriage retreat, every session was this. Pray, pray, pray. You, you and your wife should pray together. Every night, get to, on your knees and pray together. So, you know, you start asking people, this other pastors, hey, you and your wife pray together? Well, yeah, we pray together. No, I mean, like, seriously pray together. Not just say, hey, God bless the food. You know, well, I mean, do you have a time where you get maybe on your knees beside your bed? Well, not really, but... You know, and this guy's like, we do it every night, me and my wife, every night. I made it a point. Me and my wife, we close with, pray, pray together, pray together. And everybody's like, it was good. Everybody left the marriage retreat, and it was based on prayer. You can't argue with that, can you? They even had scripture for it. <laughs> you can't argue with that. Well, it was crazy. It was like a month after the retreat. It came out. The guy had been having an affair on his wife for like a year and a half. Just about the time he started praying with her. Isn't that weird? Well, that's human nature. That's what we do. He wanted to pull her close, obviously feeling terribly guilty, not feeling, you know, right. You know, that's why, you know, if you don't bring flowers home to your wife and every once in a while you do, ding, 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 what's going on here, Junior? You know, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe not. But we like to sometimes pick on an issue and just say it's bigger and better than the other, when in reality it's not. The Bible levels that playing field, doesn't it? That's what the Bible says. We tend to like to look at people and be like, man, look at that guy. Look at that guy. Do you see that dust? Do you see that, them wood chips in that guy's eye? you see that dust? Why don't he just wipe that out? It's all gathered around the moisture in the corner. It looks like he's got cat litter in the corner of his eyeballs. And yet you're walking and turning around, and everybody's like, whoa, what? Because you've got a telephone pole sticking out of your head. That's what Jesus Christ said. It's amazing to me how you look at people. You want to look at these little bitty issues in people's life. And you have a hard time looking at yourself, looking into the perfect law of liberty and saying, saying, and I got a two-by-four sticking out of my head. Yeah. But we like to judge it, don't we? And so listen, the whole point today is this. The lost mind is against God. It, you're born that way. It's off. It's reprobate. And I don't care what your philosophy is on any subject. I don't even care what political party you like. I got news for you. It's off. When it don't line up with God's word. The lost mind. But God always says, but I got a new mind for you. I got a new mind for you. Isn't it amazing? Even half of what we read in here and all the nationalities, they don't even have a government like ours. You know, people that live in America think like America is, God bless the USA. You know, America is the place, right? Amen. You know, that's what it is. You know, we got to be this way, both this way. It's the best, isn't it? And you, you go to other places in the world, you realize, not really. God's word, no matter what culture you live in, what country, God's word lives and thrives in socialistic countries. 
The issue is not turning the world into like Democrats. It's not a democratic society. The issue is not turning everybody like into uh, capitalists. But we think that. Because a lot of times they have some godly points that line up better than these points over here. Okay, that's fine. Those are principles and points. But I got news for you. There's countries all over the world. They need this. Why? People are empty. They're lost. They don't think correctly. It don't matter where you land on that side. What matters is, do you have the new mind? A new, brand new mind, and then are you filling it? Because this is the mind of Christ. So the message today is get out of your head and get into the mind of Christ. That's the message for all of us. I don't care what, you got marriage problems, you're having trouble with a kid. What, what is it? You're having struggles at work. You're terrible at your finances. You've got addictions in your life. You know what you need to do? Hey, what's your opinion about this? Here's what I think, dude. Hey, stop. I don't give a rat's behind what you think. Oh, don't be offended by that because you could say the same thing to me. But let's both give a care about what God thinks, what his word says.